Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. I'm your host, Sophia Sanchez. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, singer-songwriter Ben Sharkey is here for our Checking In segment. We'll also feature artist Raman from the Heavenly Dogs Collective, and singer-songwriter Jill Jack will perform in studio. <laughs> We begin the show with our Checking In segment. Singer-songwriter Ben Sharkey appeared on the pilot that launched Metro Arts Detroit several years ago. Welcome back to Wayne State. Thanks for having me back. For those who don't know already, what is a jazz crooner? Oh gosh, I don't even know if I can really explain that. It's, it's basically, <laughs> it's a lot of fluff. <laughs> 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 um, it's a, just a, a, sing, a singer who is, sings jazz. And I, I guess it's, uh, I guess maybe you could uh, describe it as like a romantic singer, okay. basically. Cool. So, yeah. what's been going on recently? What's, um, what's new? I am working on a new album. Okay. And um, it's kind of like featuring more of the old swingy kind of stuff, but there's um, kind of like a, a modern twist on it. I'm going to use some modern beats, more dancey. Mm. Um, my last album was like a little bit more loungy, and this is going to be more focused on dance. All right. So, yeah. So how did your love of jazz first begin? Um, it happened in high school, um, my senior year. Uh, previously, I used to listen to R&B and hip hop and all that kind of stuff. Really? And I was living in, yeah, I was living in the country, and everyone was around me that was li listening to country music mm -hmm. and rock and that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I I don't know if I am like a rebel or if what it is. And I'm like I don't want to be like anyone else. I'm gonna listen to R and B when everyone's sure. listening to country. And so then I moved into um, the city. My senior year, I kind of skipped town, mm -hmm. and um, I was living with some roommates, and they had a, a more vast collection of music mm -hmm. than I ever seen. And so. Um, I was just cleaning up one day and then a stack of CDs fell over and it was Harry Connick Jr. and I was hooked on jazz ever since then. Really nice. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure you have some influences. Tell us about your your inspiration. Um, well, I mean, there's, I grab inspiration from a lot of different artists, um, musicians, um, like even as, as far left as Bjork, you know, mm -hmm. um, her, just her concepts of music and song and, and uh, her music videos are just always Amazing. so cool. Yeah, you've yeah, seen them? Yeah. Okay, so, um, and then also, you know, Frank Sinatra, he has such swagger, yeah, you know? Yeah, really classic. So, yeah, and he's very classic, you know, I try to um, kind of uh, dress up, you know, if like to get that, capture that vibe a little bit, that yeah. crooner uh, vibe um, from him. And then, of course, Michael Jackson is like one of the best performers of all time yeah you know so it I mean it's a whole gamut yeah so That's what has personal. been your most memorable performance um, there's been several mm -hmm. um, and I guess come to think of it there's um, I mean I, I've performed at the Royal Oak Music Theater a couple times once I did for um, I opened up for Robin Thicke and it was awesome because he had like a sea of screaming girls yeah. that were like there for him but I think I like kind of got a little bit of that sure, a little taste of, of that too yeah. you know so um, that was awesome um, and then there's also another performance at Royal Oak Music Theater I did um, the New Year's Eve celebration there and it was just packed full of people and People are really fun when they're celebrating something yeah. and also when they've had a little bit of liquor. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, it's really lively. Yeah, yeah, it's very lively. So that was really fun because people were really grooving into music. Mm -hmm. And at that time, like, I've grown as a musician and the music mm -hmm. has gotten more solid. And, like, so it's, like, more of a performance than it has been before. And, nice. like, it's, 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 it's good to, like, just, you know, own it. Yeah. You know? So where can people learn more about you? Um, where can people learn more about me? Like your me? website, social media? Uh, yeah, bensharkey.com okay. is um, my website. And I post there, um, you know, that's just like the, that's like the main place. But, you know, of course, I'm on Instagram, I'm uh, Facebook, Ben Sharkey, Ben Sharkey Sings. 
Um, what else is going on these days? Twitter. Twitter? Okay, good. Yeah. Well, thank you so That's much better. for being here today. Thank you. So I understand that you brought one of your most recent music videos, yeah. which won a Detroit Music Award. Yes, so why yeah. don't you introduce that for us here on Metro Arts? Okay. Um, this is What You've Given. It was directed by John Felipe. I hope you enjoy. I get excited when you scream my name. I feel ignited like a rocket burst in the flame. Do you hear the sirens? They've come to put me out. I won't go in silence. That's not what I'm about I'm devout, it's gonna be a fight without a doubt I said the heat's so hypnotic, babe I can never misbehave No Your kiss is intoxicating I am your love drunk slave And I'm gonna save every little drop that you gave And what you've given me is a taste of transcendency And it makes it hot for my hands and knees Give you a ba da do ba My heart won't let you go In my mind you're a centerfold And when you're near me I lose control So give me love, 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 love Nothing can stop me When it comes to you Spells can taunt me. You are my special witch's brew. Have you read the paper? It seems we made front page. The red blooded caper. The public is outraged, but it won't be caged. They can come and find me center stage. I say the geese so are hypnotic, babe. I can never misbehave. Oh no, oh, oh. your kiss is intoxicating. I am your love strong slave, and I'm gonna save every little drop that you gave. And what you've given me is a taste of transcendency, and it makes it hard for my hands and knees. Give you up, 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 do up, up. My heart won't let you go. In my mind, jokes and all fold And when you name me, I lose control so give me love, 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 love Don't mean a thing If it ain't got that sting You've got me jumping through swell Hanging on a string Dipping on a stock roll You lead me to new heights Put the pedal to the metal If my seat those flashing lights I may be selfish to myself The drug has me helpless Has us to my hell Do you feel that drum beat We're tangled in the swing Well that's how my heart beats Since you crowned me king And I'm gonna sing Sit back, relax let me do my thing. What you've given me is a taste of transcendency, and it makes it hard for my hands and me to give you up, 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 Heart won't let you go In my mind you was in a fold And when you're near me I lose control so give me love, 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 love We'd like to welcome artist Raman to Wayne State University and Metro Arts. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So you're part of Heavenly Dog 
Art Collective. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Uh, we're a multimedia art collective based out of Detroit, Michigan. Um, there's about a dozen of us right now okay. um, working in various fields from graphic design, illustration, graffiti art, photography. So how did the collective start? Um, well, one day I just quit my job mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, man, I really need to get into something yeah. where if I get fired, I still have a or if, if I get in trouble, mm -hmm. I still have a job and sure. don't get fired. So um, we started this collective because I, I know a lot of creative individuals mm -hmm. who are extremely talented. Mm -hmm. And um, we're all really good at what we do, but we're like, we're, we're broke. You know, we're not yeah. making money. <laughs> yeah. so, the story of an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we were like, um, let's figure out how to actually generate money and help the community sure. and make things happen. Nice. So. so what style of art do you create? Um, I went to school briefly for mm -hmm. graphic design, okay. but um, soon after fell in love with graffiti and abstract art. Nice. So um, that's, that's what I've been doing for the last three years, mm -hmm. but recently I've been doing illustration work as well. Nice. So when did you first realize that you wanted to become an artist? Um, I actually never had that choice. Yeah. And um, my, my mother was a phenomenal abstract artist, and um, so I've always been around it my entire mm -hmm. life. And um, recently, I, I was just talking to my dad, and um, I was like, Dad, I'm so sorry that I'm not a lawyer <laughs> or a yeah. doctor, something that makes money. And um, he said, no, I'd much rather you be the person that you want to be yeah. and um, figure out how to make a living that way. So what's your creative process like? Um, I'm very inspired of the social condition that we're in, mm -hmm. um, in America and as the entire world. and. Um, I, I try not to make my art so much about myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of these conditions, um, my, my process is very much derivative of the anger that comes from witnessing the horrific things that are happening and um, learning how to um, turn that anger into something productive. Sure. Um, because for me, I, I know I can't work from a very positive place of like, oh, let's make pretty stuff because right. for the sake of aesthetics. Yeah. And um, no, I, I'm very um, aware of the things that are happening. So my process is entirely derivative of controlling that anger and trying to make something positive out of it. Nice. So there's about a dozen people in the collective. Do you all co collaborate on, on projects or? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's several photographers. Okay. A lot of us are from a graffiti background or, or um, illustration and um, abstract work. So whenever we find that, oh, this person is really good at this, I could use their help. You know, it's it's like a support group for artists. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. Describe some of the the work you you've brought. Um, this is all uh, abstract, um, but it's very much inspired by calligraphy, and it's all done with spray paint. Wow. Um, no stencils. It's uh, pretty much freehand and scraped away. So it's, yeah. That's pretty much it. And it's part of a larger body of work? or Yes, I yeah. believe there's 36 pieces all wow. together. Wow. Um, and these are three of the pieces that are left. Uh, fortunately, because this one's my favorite piece. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> How has Detroit impacted your work? Um, I've, I've been here my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of other places, and sure. none of them resonate the same way as Detroit does. Mm -hmm. And um, everything that I do, I've learn to accept the flaws the way that I've learned to accept, you know, the, the city. And um, I really enjoy just being in this environment and uh, it, that, that grittiness, that, that toughness. Yeah. Um, it's inspiring, you know, that no matter what you do, these buildings still stand, you know. Sure. And um, I, I always want to reflect that quality in my work. That's great. Not, so, not trying to be pretty. Right. Or, right. Yeah. Where can we learn more about you? Um, go to heavenlydogs.org. Okay. Um, that's really the best way. We update our blog as frequently as we can, Perfect. and all of our social media networks are connected to that. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. <laughs>
Well, it's a mixture of a lot of different things. It's difficult because we do live in a society where they put you in a box. Sure. And so it was always hard for me. But basically, I have everything from folk, rock, country to pop. And so that's kind of been more labeled like Americana music. Okay. And more and more people are starting to understand that genre of music. Sure. It gives us a little more space. It doesn't yes. tie us right in, you know. What inspires you? You know, in, in regard to, I guess, my musical writing, um, everyday life could inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, something strange could inspire me, and I never know for sure what that song's <laughs> about. And five years later, it'll be like, oh, that's what it was about. <laughs> so I think as an artist, um, if you want to be a really good artist, you have to be very open to mm -hmm. life, which isn't always easy, because sometimes you want to close that baby out. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, so the more open you are, the more inspiration you get, even from you know billboard signs mm -hmm. to somebody saying something. And um, it's, it's pretty simple when you allow yourself that freedom. Yeah. What do you like best about performing live? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, kind of your love, bread and butter, right? Actually, yeah. <laughs> I love the relationship. The challenge yeah. of going into a room full of people you might not know, mm -hmm. or they think they might know you, but um, and really connecting with them, mm -hmm. to really inspire them, to, to get them to interact with you in a, a spiritual way almost. Yeah. Um, and it's a challenge, and then once you're there and you know you're there, you got it, and then you fly with it, and then it literally, it, it makes me fly. It, oh my it gosh, just makes it's kind me of euphoric. Yeah. Oh, extremely yeah. euphoric. That's yeah. exactly what it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you start your music career? Well, my mom yeah. used to put us <laughs> on stage. I think I was three at no the kidding. time, and there were oh four of us girls, and they dressed us all the same, mm -hmm. and we used to do these little recitals, and she wanted us Cute. to be like the Von Trapp family, but um, <laughs> it didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> too much sibling rivalry, I think. But we ended up, um, you know, I kind of got away from it. I was in church, you know, in, in guitar groups and things like that, and did choir, but I never really considered doing it for a living because we kind of grew up where we were going to go to college and get a real mm -hmm. job, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And um, when I dropped out of college, don't do that, children. Um, <laughs> I started kind of hanging out at different places where there's music and they allow me to come up and sing. And so wow. I think my first two years I was paid um, with quesadillas and drinks. That's what my income was. And um, Hey, I mean, you need to eat, so. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually I moved yeah. my way up and yeah. I was in a lot of different bands as a backup singer, but I just had this wow. itch and this goal to really do it myself. And so nice. I stepped out and decided to go solo. and. My whole world changed after that. Wow. Yeah. What was your proudest moment as a musician? I think, you know, there's a lot of different ones and they could vary. It could be something small like making someone come up to you and like say, you know, you, you, um, I was going to kill myself and actually you made me live. I mean, mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. are, it obviously just blows your mind. Yeah. But I think one of the most exciting ones from the artistic point of view was when we got to open for Bob Seger. Oh my and goodness. it was at the palace and um, he actually then watched our sound check. And uh, after I got back from my sound check, they uh, asked me to go meet with him, and he invited us to the next show in uh, London, Ontario. So being in front of 20,000 people mm -hmm. is the biggest high. I yeah. couldn't even breathe when I was done. I was so excited. Oh, my yeah, goodness. It was fantastic. What are some of your goals for your music career? That's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I've been at it a long time, so yeah. it's hard to, I think, one of my goals is to continue. Sure, you know? of course. Um, and then Keep there's going. other things about getting balance in life, because mm -hmm. sometimes when you sure. throw yourself into this business, it's all business, and you don't get to do some of the holidays, and like, today my, yeah. my poor bandmate should be home with his wife, it's his anniversary, you know, but things like that that you um, give up. So finding the balance, but also creating music that means enough to me, not mm -hmm. just to you know, I've made 10 CDs. Um, I don't want to just keep manufacturing just to keep people happy. I sure. want it to say something. Yeah. And I think in my life, um, the more influential and helpful I can be with my music, that's more important to me, I think, yeah. than anything right now. Nice. Where can we learn more about you? If you go to jilljack.com. Okay. And then I'm also on, obviously, Facebook, Twitter, okay. and all that. But you can get all that on my, on my website. Okay, perfect. So you're going to play a few songs for us today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, they are new tunes, so Ooh. a little nervous about it. Um, one is called Crooked Crown, and okay. when I wrote it, I wasn't sure why I wrote it, but then as, as it all came out, uh, I looked at it, and it's really being kind of the, um, just a, kind of like the person that doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it shows that you really are okay. That's you know, great. it's cool not to fit in. Yeah. It's, it's cool to be different and be your own person. And I really like that song. And then this other song that we're going to do is uh, called You and Me Against the World. 
and I really thought it was about my husband when I first wrote it. But then by the third verse, as I was finishing it, it was about my guitar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I felt bad. I'm like, sorry, honey. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so those are brand new tunes, yeah. and it'll be on the next. Uh, we should be putting out a CD called Live at the Hopcat, which we just recorded um, right. a couple days ago. Okay, so perfect. We'll well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And now here's Jill Jack on Metro Arts Detroit, produced in the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. She always wears her crown a little crooked Though she's smart she tends to play a little stupid Instead of her heart She wipes her nose on her sleeve when it's time for her grand entrance She'll be looking for the nearest exit That girl needs to breathe She likes to play in the puddles on the street She loves, she don't believe in Cupid, but he wins her heart. They float away.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Ben Sharkey, Raman, and Jill Jack for being here today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host, Sophia Sanchez, reminding you to seek out inspiration and explore the arts in your community.